Hey guys, Vladimir here. So after surfing the YouTubes, I came across this really great project by Devin with the Make Anything channel. It is a real working 3D printed slinky or springo as Devin calls them. Uh, by the way, the Make Anything channel, great stuff. Highly recommend you check it out if you haven't yet. So after seeing this, I went on Thingiverse to see if there were any models already uploaded and it turns out this is a thing. There are a bunch of models on Thingiverse, so I thought, hey, why not get in on the fun? This excites me, not only because I love slinkies, but because of how easy it is to 3D print springs. And springs have a whole range of practical applications. So why am I doing a video on something that's already been done when I can say, just go check out what he did? Well, that's because I feel I have something to add and it has to do with the design approach for this model. Um, see, in Devin's video, he uses a plugin for Fusion 360 in order to get that helix shape. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how you can get the same results by using the already built-in functions with Fusion. But first, let's back up a minute to talk about what makes this design so cool. If you were to hand this to me, uh, my first impression would be that no way was this printed in an FDM printer because in an FDM printer you rely on the bottom layers to support the top layers. The genius behind this design is that we actually use that limitation to our advantage. Take a look at the model. If I do a cross section, you see the little gaps between the coil. At first glance, you may think that printing this without supports would result in a failed print. But what really happens is that it results in poor layer adhesions where the gaps are, but subsequent layers turn out fine. Normally poor layer adhesion is a bad thing, but in this case, it's exactly what we need because when the print is complete, we can simply go in and slice apart the weak bonds. The result is a real working slinky. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the Fusion 360 design. Uh, just a warning, I'm going to move fairly quick through this. And if you're interested in learning how to design for 3D printing, uh, check out my design courses at desktopmakes.com. We're going to begin with the coil tool. So let's go to create and down to coil. We'll choose our XY plane, start at the origin and come out and enter a diameter of 70 millimeters. Hit enter and you'll see your coil in this dialog box. So let's tweak a few things in this box. We're going to change type to revolution and pitch. Diameter will keep at 70 revolutions. Let's make that 50 for now. Pitch will do two millimeters, angle zero. Section will do internal triangular. And section position will do on center. Section size, one millimeter, new body, and click OK. And this gives us our coil. Now, I mainly did this just to show you what that looks like, but I found out that uh, this type of geometry, trying to ed edit this later is a bit demanding on your computer, or at least it was on mine. It kept freezing up and causing it to crash. So I had to think of a different approach. And what I came up with is to work with just one revolution first, and then we can go ahead and uh, make a rectangular pattern of that. So let's go to our timeline, double click on it, and we're gonna change revolutions from 50 down to one and click OK. So there's our one coil, and we're gonna repeat that process. So we're gonna go to create coil, again, choose our XY plane, start at an origin, and this time we're gonna enter a diameter of 60 millimeters. So we'll get our dialog box again, and we're gonna basically uh, make everything the same. The only difference is gonna be that this one is 60 millimeters in diameter. So revolutions, let's change that uh, back to one. Pitch is gonna be two, angle zero, triangular internal on center, and section size, we're gonna make that one millimeter. New body, and click OK. So there's our two coils, each of one revolution. Next, we're gonna go to uh, sketch or create sketch and we'll choose our uh, ZX or that blue red plane. And we're gonna go ahead and navigate to this view and choose sketch, project include, include 3D geometry and we're gonna choose that internal line of each of these coils. So you'll see this purple uh, you know, highlight and if we untoggle bodies, you'll see them a lot better. So we can go ahead and click on stop sketch. And in fact, we don't need these bodies anymore. So go ahead and expand that and right click and just remove them from our time or from our browser here. 
So right click, remove, and we're left with just these profiles. We're gonna uh, create another sketch this time, again on our ZX plane, and we're gonna reference these points. If you're not snapping to them, you can always project them into your sketch by hitting P, and we'll just select these two points, click OK, R for rectangle, and we'll go ahead and just reference this one. So we snap to our first one, we're gonna reference that second one, and then we should be able to go up um, right in line with that point and then click again. D for dimension, we'll dimension this out to 1.4 millimeters. Now 1.4 because this is gonna be the thickness of our coil and so what's left is 0.6 millimeters because remember that pitch was two millimeters. So that 0.6 millimeters is gonna be that gap in between each coil. So this worked for me when I uh, test printed a, a small portion. Um, so I think it's a good place to start. You know, you can experiment with that, uh, that gap. So we're gonna click on Stop Sketch and next we're gonna go to Create Sweep. For type, we're gonna go Path and Guide Rail choose our rectangle as our profile and for our path we'll go ahead and choose uh, one line as our path and guide rail as the other one click ok and you'll see we have that one coil now that is our rectangle or, or our rectangular being swept um, using that uh, those profiles so okay now that we have that we can uh, go ahead and create a rectangular pattern of this Go to create and down to pattern and choose rectangular pattern. Uh, we'll take a look at our dialog box and we're gonna change pattern type to bodies. Object, we'll choose our coil direction. Choose your Z axis spacing. Our distance type, we'll keep that as spacing. A quantity, we're gonna make that 50. And distance, we're gonna make that the same as our uh, pitch, which is two millimeters and click okay. And there is our coil. So basically what we have is uh, one revolution of our coil copied 50 times. And if you look on the left here, you'll see uh, 50 different bodies. So this, uh, again, just makes it um, easier in our system to go about this route. So we're not quite there yet because if we take a look at this and take a look at the bottom, it's there's no way this is going to be able to stick in our bed, uh, our print bed, because... Um, since this is a coil, the only part that's going to be touching is a little piece here and since this is uh, constantly coiling up, um, we're going to have a small piece touching and nothing else. So this will be a failed print. So to, in order to fix that, we're going to need to um, choose this profile and create just a constant revolution around here so we have uh, this constant body touching uh, our build plate. Very simple to do that, we're going to go to create, uh, go down to revolve choose this surface here and we're gonna cl click on axis and choose our Z axis here um, simply change operation from cut to new body and click OK we'll go ahead and do the same thing with that top uh, top profile so again create revolve choose our surface as far as our axis um, I can go down and try to select it or I can just go to origin here. I know it's my z-axis so I'm just going to click it there and uh, For cut I'm going to change that to new body and click OK So that's looking good one final thing is to combine everything to one body uh, so we're not dealing with uh, it says 54, but remember we uh, removed those two bodies So we actually have 52 bodies here because we start at actually body 3 so let's go to modify, combine, choose our first body, scroll all the way down, hold shift, and choose our last body. And once everything highlights, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just make sure our operation is set to join and click OK. So Fusion will go ahead and combine everything to one body, and we should see now that we just have one body that we can toggle on and off. So, okay, this is ready to be sent to the printer. Uh, what I'm gonna do is run a quick simulation, and I recommend doing this, um, you know, just saves you some time. So, uh, I like Simplify 3D Simulation, so I'm gonna go ahead and send it there. So I'm gonna go to Make 3D Print, choose the body, 
um, send to 3D print utility. I have it as under custom. I'm going to click OK. Um, so this will be brought into Simplify 3D. You can see I had already done that. So there's a previous model there. I'm just going to remove it. And I'm going to go to prepare to print and then just click on play for that simulation and just quickly look at this. And what I'm checking for is exactly this. I want that first layer to be two concentric circles and I wanted to go in and fill that in. Uh, if you start getting something wonky where it starts creating a small section and going somewhere else and creating another section, then you may want to go back and check your design. Um, but as long as you're getting this, uh, you should be good. We'll just carry this through and you should see, um, if you see something like this, then that means we're looking good. So, okay, ready to be printed. I'm actually not gonna print it with Simplify 3D. I'm gonna use a slicer because I'm gonna send this to my Prusa i3 Mark II printer. Um, but I just love the simulation here. Okay, uh, other important thing to know is as far as my layer height, I set this to uh, 0.2 millimeters and that printed fine. So um, go ahead and give it a shot. All right, I hope you enjoyed that and hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'm already thinking of a way of how I can automate this, uh, similar to what I did with uh, twist face automation, or as Lady Ada uh, called it, the swizzler. Um, Vlad built a uh, beautiful 3D printed like twirl spinner. I don't know what they're called, but they're like, they screw into each other. Swizzler, I don't know. It's like a swizzler, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and to check out my design courses at desktopmakes.com.